This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the BlackBerry Playbook running OS 2.0. It only took 10 months from launch day for him to come up with this major OS update. And we're going to check out how it works with BlackBerry Bridge in the latest version on this Verizon BlackBerry Vault 9930. So this is the BlackBerry Playbook, the same model that we reviewed back in April of 2011, but we've finally gotten the BlackBerry OS 2.0 update, long-awaited update, because it brings native PIM applications. It means you get calendar, you have contacts, you have email on the device without having to use BlackBerry Bridge on a BlackBerry smartphone. And it has the Android VM, which means you can run Android applications. Now, uh huh. That doesn't mean you get a great Android market icon on here and you can download anything you want directly off the Android market. They do have to be repackaged and signed and uploaded to BlackBerry App World. You can sideload, we'll get around that later. So fast forward, here we are 10 months after the product's release, longer than it takes to make a human baby, but that's, that's another issue right there. And we finally got this added functionality that makes the tablet much more of a well-rounded device compared to other tablets that did come with native PIM applications and so on. This guy can now do pretty much all the basics well. It still has that good web browser, has Adobe Flash with good performance for Adobe Flash. You have email on here, you have support for Google, Google Contacts, Google Calendar, Google Email, uh, MS Exchange syncing for PIM stuff and your email. It's definitely more capable device. Pop and IMAP email are supported as well. And we'll take a look at those new clients. So here you can see about tablet we have version 2.0 and so on. And if you've got a, a, a playbook and you're waiting for that update, you can just go right up here to software updates and tell it to check for an update and it'll tell you about it. And it's pretty big, folks. It's 410 megs, so it's going to take a little while to download depending on your internet connection. But we had no problems with it downloading and installed quickly and had no problems whatsoever with the upgrade process. And all of your data stays intact, so it doesn't wipe out your existing applications and stuff that's on here. As always, you've got the same functionality, side scroll, look through your app drawer right here, you can go up and down, you can minimize applications just like that, there's also a little close box here. And right now we're actually looking at the bridge contacts application, so you have two sets, and we'll explore that. Right now we're just going to close that and put that away. You've got your native stuff right here, and it's also on the top bar, as you can see contacts, calendar, we'll take a look at the native contacts application. Still some occasional pauses, you can see here, uh, not the most super fast and fluid operating system on the planet, but it's not too bad either, so we've got a contact up here, this is for a T-Mobile store, and you've got a bunch of shortcuts here, you can click here to see if there's anything going on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook for this person, or business as this may be. This one tries to find news for the contacts company, if you have the company field filled in. Any appointments you have relating to that person will be here. Social networking, LinkedIn connections right there. And then you can actually do a push pin and find them on the map. But you can only do that if you have shared events in the calendar. You can start as a favorite. You can edit it. And if you edit, you see you've got a full set of fields here, including support for BlackBerry pin, addresses, pretty much everything you're ever going to need is right there. And if you've got stuff from social networking here, then so we've got a Seuss from our Twitter account shows up and knows it has the tab changes here to show us that's from Twitter and so on. And if you've got a Facebook contact, it would switch to Facebook. So that's the PIM application. The one thing I want to show you, if you've got a website, a link in your contacts, you can just tap on that and it'll launch the web browser for you and go to that page. Still a very capable web browser, one of the nicer ones we've seen on a tablet. Not too much has changed here. You can see the speed for pinch zooming is very good. And again, we've got support for Adobe Flash as well. So that's the browser. And now we're going to take a look at the calendar. And again, this is the native calendar, not the one through BlackBerry Bridge that we're looking at. There's your basic calendar view. We've got the month over here, day, agenda, people. New people, anybody that you're meeting with today. It'll show up here who you're meeting with. And that's what it looks like if you have some appointments. And you can switch to your day view over here. And you can switch to week view here. And the date itself. 
Next we have the messaging application and this brings everything in. It brings in Twitter, Facebook if you set those accounts up, your, your Gmail, your email, all of that kind of stuff. So right now we're looking at inbox and really this is an inbox of Facebook stuff. And if you tap over here you can see I've got a Gmail account and then Facebook, Twitter and so on. I can add an account and if I want to add an account you can see what kinds of accounts are supported. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn email, calendar, and contacts, and if we go to advanced setup, you can see what your choices are. Exchange, Gmail, Hotmail, IMAP, Pop, CalDave, and CardDave. Now when I set up my Google account on this, you had to enter actually everything in here. It asked for a domain, username, password, that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit old-fashioned if you're used to more turnkey approaches to it, but it's not too hard. Your, your email address is the same thing as your username. You enter a password, you leave the domain field blank, and then you can choose if you want to sync calendar or contacts, email, or all the whole shebang, including push support. So that's the new PIM stuff, and now we're going to take a look at BlackBerry Bridge because we've got our handy dandy old 9930 set up here and they are connected over bridge using Bluetooth. And we've got the little icon up here. So if you want to use it, you just launch the BlackBerry Bridge application and I've got access to my messages, contacts, calendar, BBM, memo pad, and tasks all in here. Now the UI is a little bit different for these applications than it is for the ones that are native and we'll take a look at that right now. And changes are still really quickly and seamlessly crossed over between the two devices. It's very good. So here's our calendar view right now. We are in week. We can go to month view. We can go to day view. You can see that I have an important need to call for pizza at 4 p.m. That's come over from my phone to tell me that. And I get some more information there where and all that kind of stuff. What time zone. And now we're looking at our contacts application here. and We've got just a few contacts that are in our phone that have come over here. And you can see it, it's a very nice, well presented format. If you tap here, you can send an email, and it actually will use your phone to send that email. It's not going to use the device itself. Remember, this was written back in the days before this had native capabilities to do such things as send email. And we can go to the website here. So that's a made up website. If you tap that, it will use the web browser on this device. And then I'm going to show you the remote control feature that you use actually on the phone to remotely control your playbook. It's more neat maybe than absolutely useful, but you can see, see the virtual cursor that's appeared here on the screen. So I can tap this thing to make it big. And then you have this, you can see the little arrows here so we can do swipe controls that mimic the swipe controls that you can use here by going from bezel to bezel. So say we want to go sideways. Can't go any further that way, but we can go this way. And we can minimize by swiping up, although sometimes that's a little bit trickier to, to do. So yeah, in theory, you've got basically a virtual trackpad here, plus the support for gestures so you can control the device. Now, App World has got a little visual revamp that was much needed. And the, the first screens that you'll see are much more graphically pleasing looking and more sophisticated. So that's what you've got now, much better than the old kind of text and teeny icon look. So you've got some stuff that's featured here, and we've already got some things that have been brought over from the Android market that are showing up. We've got Evernote, for example, and there are some games like uh, SimCity Deluxe from EA. Gameloft has brought a bunch of games over. So far we're not seeing the tons and tons of Android apps that we were hoping for, but this is just the first day that this has become available, and we're sure more will populate, so it's going to take a while to see just how many Android apps make it over. Now, as I mentioned, you don't, this doesn't mean you, you get the Android market icon on your phone and the application to download apps. Uh, developers actually have to repackage their app, which is a pretty simple process, uh, sign it, and then put it up on BlackBerry App World. And there are a few rules. For example, apps that are free but use in-app advertising, those aren't up there. So that's a shame because some of the most popular apps on Android actually are free apps that have in-app advertising. Say so you want to go and drill through and look at games. Again, you get a nice pretty screen here of some of the featured games. And if you want to look at the top paid games, you're, you're greeted with pretty much the older interface at this point. And you can see now we've got a couple new titles again. We've got SimCity Deluxe for BlackBerry, that's $6.99. We've got Nova 2 here, HD for $2.99. Starfront Collision HD for $0.99. Cents. So some Game Loft titles are there. Let's Golf is on board. And in terms of apps, You look at top free.
Not as many Android apps have come over just yet, but like I said, this is a little bit early yet. Now, if you do have Android apps on here, you don't have to do anything. You just launch the app just as if it was a native BlackBerry app, and it just launches rather quickly and runs absolutely fine. Now, when it comes to that Android app selection, like I said, if you just want to use it in your average normal turnkey tablet way, you have to wait for that Android app to get put up on BlackBerry App World as the developer decides that they wish to do so. But for those of you who are more adventurous, you can actually sideload stuff. It's not the super simplest process. You can actually, if you're pretty geeky with Android, you can pull the APK, APK files, which are the installer files, off of your Android device and transfer them to your PC, and then you're going to need to download the BlackBerry Developer Tools Java runtime and Android SDK to repackage it and sign it. And BlackBerry also has a, a web version of this pro process to simplify it for a little bit for you. So you've got to repackage it into a bar file, sign it up, and then you're going to transfer it over. And you can use an app called DDPB to do that, which is made by a lovely volunteer person on the web and if you google for that you'll find that app to download and you can use that then to transfer over now if all that sounds like just way too much to bother with you can check there's a google spreadsheet online and we'll put the link up in our accompanying post for this video where you can look and see if somebody's already done the work for you but people have been downloading their apks and converting them over so if, if you want to try to sideload something that way you can do that for example some of them actually did kindle and they said that it worked but of course amazon wasn't too happy with that being done so they pulled it hopefully we'll see real honest to goodness kindle available someday for the playbook along with netflix and some other things but there are some popular applications that in fact do work like the pulse newsreader also new is docs to go is here yay you can view, edit, and create MS Office documents. That's Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And you can view PDF files, and you can see you can create new Word documents and new Excel-compatible documents right here. Great to see that. And we've also got Print2Go. This is actually something you can use to use your PC to wirelessly send encrypted documents to the playbook. Basically, you use the printer, the Print2Go printer. And so anything that's not compatible, say not, not an MS Office document or a PDF that you need to get it over here to the device, you can basically create a, a printed version of that so-called fi digital file and send it over to the playbook, and this walks you through setting it up. So now we've got one document here, and this is actually the Getting Started document, and here it is, and it explains how it works. What it really is is basically a PDF writer for your PC that sends it wirelessly over to your playbook. So then it's going to open up with documents to go which can view PDF files or you can open up an Adobe Reader either way. Last but not least you finally get a file manager so you don't have to download a third-party one and it's right here. Pretty basic and you can actually use this to look at what's on your phone too since we're connected right now using Blackberry Bridge that's kinda of cool so you can pull stuff off. So here we go and you can go between pictures, videos, music, and documents right there and you can search for stuff so not your full-fledged geeky kind of file manager like we've got this one downloaded here that we purchased off the market and this one gives you an absolutely detailed view of every folder that's on the device for those of you who are more power users but this is something that you can get off of the BlackBerry app world but for basic stuff at least you get something now from RIM so that's the BlackBerry Playbook, same as it ever was in terms of hardware, but revived with BlackBerry OS 2.0. Brings you PIM applications, Office document viewing and creation suite, a basic file manager, and an improved BlackBerry Bridge, where you can use your BlackBerry even as a remote control for the tablet. Definitely this makes the BlackBerry Playbook a more compelling device, so it's still, I think, a kind of tough sell unless you're a real BlackBerry fan compared to, say, the iPad. Two are some of the top Android tablets, and that's mostly because the app selection is still weak. We're just going to have to wait and see how many Android applications get ported over to BlackBerry App World. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. You can visit our website to read the full review of the BlackBerry Playbook, and also check out our BlackBerry Playbook video review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.